Was there an Algerian nation before French colonization? That's the question French President Emmanuel Macron reportedly asked. The statement has angered Algeria. But what's behind this? And what does it tell us about France's colonial past? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Imran Khan. France and Algeria have had a complicated relationship for decades. Although French colonial rule ended in the 1960s, France has often been accused of interference in Algeria's affairs. And President Emmanuel Macron's recent critical comments about Algeria's politics and history are threatening to make things worse. The Algerian government has responded to the latest remarks by recalling its ambassador to France and banning the French military from its airspace. French military aircraft fly through Algeria to reach troops helping the fight against armed groups in the Sahel. Algeria says Macron's comments are an inadmissible interference in its internal affairs and an intolerable affront to Algerians who died fighting French colonialism. Now, Macron's remarks were reported by the French daily newspaper Le Monde. It says they were made during the president's meeting with descendants of Algerians who fought for France in the 1954-1962 war for independence. Macron is quoted as saying, Algeria is ruled by a political military system, describing the country's official history as having been totally rewritten. While adding, you can see that the Algerian system is tired, it's been weakened by the Hirak, that's a reference to the pro-democracy movement that ended Abdul Aziz Bouteflika's nearly two-decade rule in 2019. He's also quoted questioning the existence of the Algerian nation before French colonial rule. Now, Algeria says that more than one million people were killed in its war for independence. It started in 1954, when France cracked down on rebels from the National Liberation Front who are fighting for independence. The French government has faced accusations of committing large-scale killings, systematic torture and crimes against humanity during that conflict. Emmanuel Macron acknowledged some of the atrocities in 2018, but the French government has never apologised to the Algerians about its actions during the war that ended in 1962. The tension with Algeria worsened after France sharply reduced the numbers of visas it grants to Algerians. Tunisia and Morocco are also affected. The French government blames the nation's failure to allow the return of undocumented immigrants in France for its decision. The dispute is raising concerns about France's relationship with its other former colonies in Africa, including Mali, Chad, Ivory Coast and Niger. Let's bring in our guests in Paris, Bruno Tetre, Deputy Director of the Foundation for Strategic Research in Doha, Youssef Boandel, Professor of Political Science and International Relations at Qatar University, and in Casablanca, Adam Gay, a journalist and author. Welcome to the programme. Let me begin in Doha first with Youssef Boandel. Youssef, um, the former colonisers, whether it's Britain, whether it's France, seem to have very complicated relations with the former colonised. Uh, in France's case, what used to be a relationship of take, 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 very simply put, uh, has been very difficult to retool, particularly in modern times. Do you think that's an accurate representation of what's going on? Well, it's almost accurate. I think that over the last two years or so, there has been a hope that relations between Algeria and France might improve, especially under the leadership of current President Emmanuel Macron. He opened up a few windows of hope when, uh, for instance, he talked about uh, colonialism as a crime against humanity in general. He instructed uh, Benjamin Stola, the uh, French uh, eminent professor of history of Algerian descent, uh, to uh, start some sort of a dialogue with the Algerians and open up the memories. The, uh, the heads of so many Algerians who were killed during, who were killed by the French were returned to Algeria. They showed that they showed that certain steps would be taken towards at least opening up 
one of the most sub subjects in the love-hate relations between Algeria and France. But events over the last couple of weeks and certainly over the last few days have put everything in jeopardy that I think the Algerians were not expecting uh, uh, the French President Macron to come up with these particular statements. And I guess that uh, even uh, the French president did not think that the Algeria would give such a robust uh, answer to what they have done by closing the Algerian airspace to French military uh, jets operating in Mali. In Paris, uh, Bruno Tetres, uh, is this a simple diplomatic spat, or is it, as our guest in Doha says, a miscalculation of comments by Macron that's led to a very serious incident? I think it's somewhere between the two. Just a little bit of context for your viewers. Uh, these reported statements by Macron uh, were actually happened during a meeting, an informal meeting, with uh, some uh, uh, French Algerians and Algerians uh, of the younger generation. So it, it was a free flowing conversation. But throughout this conversation, uh, it was clear that uh, Macron expressed a frustration or a disappointment after, according to him, having tried to reconcile the narratives of French history and Algerian history. And after According to him, having genuinely tried to make some gestures towards the Algerian leadership. Now, his conclusion, his main conclusion, the one that has been uh, that has made Algiers very angry, is that the system, what he calls the system, uh, cannot be reformed, and that the uh, generals um, have the Algerian generals have instrumentalized their history to their own political benefit. And that's even though he does have a good relationship with his Algerian counterpart, the, 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 the Algerian president. So this was not calculated, but this happened just after the three countries, the three migrant countries were subjected to uh, new procedures regarding visas for coming to France. And that included, of course, Algeria. So that probably added up to uh, to uh, his uh, his comments of uh, of a few days ago, uh, Bruno. I just want to c confirm. Uh, you're saying that this was these were off the cuff comments in a private meeting. Can I just confirm that that's well, what you're saying? No, I'd like to confirm that these were off the cuff remarks, but in a semi public meeting. This was not a, this was not a speech, but these right. were not off the record uh, comments. Yusuf Brandel, they were off the cuff. Remarks. They were simply having a conversation. There's no reason for the Algerians to get so angry. Or those off the cuff remarks, are they simply French arrogance? Well, I think that we need to distinguish between two friends or two uh, a group of people having a coffee, uh, coffee, uh, a coffee in the Champs Elysees, and the French president talking to some uh, youth of Algerian descent. What, whatever uh, Macron says, let's not forget that he is the president of France. And I do not necessarily believe that the uh, Macron's frustration about the Algerians is due uh, to some his frustration about making up some overtures that the Algerian regime and Algerians are not responding. I think it's much more uh, serious than that. And to my view, or to, in my opinion, it deals also with the French operations in Mali. Let's not forget that the Algerian government has changed its constitution, whereby it can deploy its military for the first time since 1973 overseas. This particular uh, article of the constitution was not very, very popular among Algerians. A lot of people in Algeria saw it as an attempt by France to get the Algerian military involved in Mali. Last, uh, last June, Macron said that the Operation Balkan in Mali would end soon and it will be under an international uh, coalition. Right. They right. expected the Algerians to be involved in that, and they were not. Okay. The second thing that, like your, uh, your guest from Paris said, it has to do with visas to a certain extent. But let's not forget last month, on the 20th of September, 
Emmanuel Macron apologized to the Harkis, to the, those Algerians who fought with France during the Algerian War of Independence, and even decorated some of them. This particular action was not very well received in Algeria. I guess that the Algerians did not want to send their military to uh, uh, to Mali in support of the French actions, and that resulted in these particular uh, comments, which were reported by Le Monde, which is one of the most influential newspapers in France and the, in the, the French-speaking right. world. Uh, Adama Gay, I will come to you in just a second, but I want to come to Bruno again, uh, uh, just to get a reaction to those comments. What do you think? Well, I don't entirely disagree. Uh, what I think Macron is trying to do, but it's a very delicate balancing act, is what he calls the reconciliation of narratives and the reconciliation of memories. So you have the hard keys in France, you have the young people, Algerians or French Algerians, and then you have the relation with the Algerian government. So it's a very difficult triangulation act. And I think he is actually honest in what he says to each of them, uh, but it's uh, maybe it's impossible to do this reconciliation. Maybe it will take another generation. Just a quick comment on the question of Mali. Uh, so far, these questions have been largely disconnected. There is what we do and don't do with Algeria in the Sahel, and there is the question of reconciling the narratives. Now, of course, politics is politics, and it's difficult both for Paris and Algiers to separate the two. Uh, what I do know for sure is that there has been an increasing frustration in Paris for what is perceived, rightly or wrongly, as a lenient attitude by Algiers regarding some jihadi movements which are freely crossing the borders. And so the retaliation uh, for Macron's comments, which is about uh, in, uh, forbidding the overflight of uh, French um, uh, um, uh, aircraft by the Algerian government actually is a very symbolic act, it's like recording the ambassador, because it doesn't change, it doesn't impede uh, our operations in the, in, the, in the Sahel. But it's a very symbolic act indeed. And it, it's not a good right. thing in any case for, uh, for the Sahel. Thank you for being so patient, Adama, uh, in Casablanca. One of the questions I want to ask you is very simple. A lot of this is historical. It's the way the former colonizers have treated the formerly colonized. And there's a lot of accusations that although actual rule has stopped, interference from the former colonizers hasn't, and that's led to frustration and anger on all sides. Is that right? Look, I think we are in a situation whereby uh, we must acknowledge that despite uh, the many criticism that can be leveled against Mr. Macron uh, for his meddling of his country into African affairs, his willingness to control the monetary and economic uh, possibilities of the former colonies like uh, West African Francophone countries uh, and, of course, Maghreb countries. The fact is that in this situation, one has to acknowledge that in Algeria, Mr. Macron has tried to put some points very important really across in a positive way, in a uh, way that indicates that there is a willingness to reopen the old wounds and fix them. But what we have here is, on the one hand, the Algerian government, and indeed, that is very strong in refusing to acknowledge its shortcomings. Indeed, I believe Mr. Macron's words, even though they are tough, from a head of state, they were right. The government of, in Algeria is controlled by the military, and they have not been allowing the people of Algeria to move towards democratization, to move towards an economic modernization, to ensure that they can bring peace to their neighborhood. But instead, they have been fighting with everybody, closing airports, airlines, Moroccan uh, planes, closing them for uh, French uh, airplanes, etc. So this is a problem from the Algerian, and they need to look at themselves in a mirror and address their own internal challenges. This cannot be continuing because the country is backsliding when you compare them with neighboring other nations that are really progressing as against what uh, Algeria has been going downward, despite its natural resources, gas and others. 
that they have not yielded. Adama, let, me be, absolute, Adama, Adama, let me be absolutely clear. Are you saying then that uh, the French president shouldn't interfere in Algeria's affairs because Algeria is a sovereign state and the sovereign state needs to sort out its own problems? What Mr. Macron said, he is entitled to say it. The world where people remain behind nation state and control their frontiers, their borders, this era is born. You have to accept that other people will look at your state right. and talk okay. about it. And Algerians also, sometimes they talk about France and their interest. The other aspect that I would like to highlight here is this. This is politics. Let me put that. Let me, Adama, let me put that to our other guests in Paris and in Doha. Let's begin in Paris uh, first. A lot of this then is to do with internal politics within France. He Macron is is facing a very tough right wing challenge uh, to uh, for in these elections that are coming up. There's an increasingly uh, feeling in France from a lot of observers I've been speaking to over the last couple of days that what is happening is actually Macron is being dragged to the right wing when it comes to immigration, when it comes to visas and things like this. And he's having to play on the right wing playing field rather than a level, a more level playing field, perhaps. I think this is not entirely false. And clearly Macron has been who appeared as a center, center left and center right uh, candidate in 2016, has indeed been dragged slightly to the right. But I would caution those making, those trying to second guess uh, the government's and uh, the president's uh, uh, actions on that, like I would caution anyone about second guessing politicians. We always suspect politicians to do everything for domestic political reasons. Well, they may have a point, but this particular conversation that was reported by Le Mans, which made a big uh, a big splash. I don't think it gains him any anything, any points uh, in terms of uh, in terms of d domestic political benefits. Again, I think. I mean, knowing a little bit how he operates, I think I don't underestimate that for him there is a genuine frustration uh, at not being able to go beyond the old historical grievances by Algeria. Now, does he make? Political uh, calculations in addition to that, perhaps so, but I would caution against uh, putting everything on the, the, uh, the, the forthcoming presidential campaign. Uh, Yusuf Wandel, I'd like to get your comments on what Adama Gay has said in Casablanca. Emmanuel Macron is absolutely allowed to make those comments about Algeria because Algeria has failed in some of its promises to France. Well, I think, well, I do believe in freedom of speech. And obviously, he can make whichever comments he wants to make. And also, he, in, to my mind, his comments are trying to make a division within the Algerian society, in which he said, basically, for the first time, a French official described the political system in Algeria as a political military uh, system. This is the worst kept secret in Algeria's history. We all know that the military in Algeria has always intervened in Algeria's politics. So this is not necessarily something new, but without the support of successive French governments, the outcome of the democratic transition in Algeria might have been different. The second uh, thing also, when he tried mm. to say that, the, that this is a, a difference between the Algerian people as a whole and this narrative of hatred uh, of France is fueled by the Algerian regime and the Algerian people are not involved in this. And this is where I think Mr. Macron is totally wrong, because if there is anything that all Algerians or almost all Algerians agreed on is that French has committed atrocities in Algeria and has supported successive regimes over the years and, most importantly, has provided support for these particular regimes and have also protected some of the nomenclatura in France. 
let's if you look at all right, at yes. ma many of the Algerian leadership in France uh, are living in France and most of the Algerian money is there so Mr Macron in this particular situation is not in a position to say what he said he is in my view completely wrong in Casablanca Adama Gay Adama there is, seems to be a disconnect between elites of, say, Algeria, Morocco, uh, Tunisia, who are very francophone, who are some hold France French passports, are very sympathetic towards France, to the actual feeling on the streets of people who are almost fed up of this colonial rule that seems to be continuing through their own leadership. What do you think? Is that true? Yes, of course. Uh... If you look around uh, Africa, from North to West Africa, across the areas where they speak French language, uh, including my own country, Senegal, you have a growing discontent against uh, French companies, uh, business people, and to a little extent, the political uh, domination of France over those areas. But let's look at the reality. The fact is that 60 years have gone in most of the independent countries in those uh, nations. The problem cannot be just put in the door, in the front door of France. There is also an in-house internal problem that needs to be addressed by our own people. You cannot be blaming everybody outsiders to be the cause of your problems. I do believe at this moment, once again, I repeat it, Mr. Macron is playing politics. Uh, he knows that he needs the voice in France of the Harkis. He needs the voice of the right wing. He needs the voice of, of those uh, people that are shifting towards Mrs. Le Pen, extreme right, Mr. Zemmour, extreme right, who are sidelining to a certain extent the middle class of the right wing, like uh, 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 the traditional right uh, parties. So he's playing politics. In the case of Africa, also he's playing politics. You heard him accusing the Prime Minister of Mali of making Sorry, a Adama, statement that Adama, is we are running out. Adama, we are running out of time. Are you are, we are running out of time, and I do want to put your points to our other uh, guests. Uh, Bruno, you were nodding in agreement there to some of uh, our guests in Casablanca's comments, but surely if there is this anti-French feeling that is um, uh, emerging in African nations, French foreign policy is in the wrong place right now because it's repeating the mistakes of the past, surely. I was nodding because I was in a, in, a, in a, I was approving one of the points made by your guest, your guest in Casablanca, and that very simply the point that six years after, more than six years after the independences, it's a bit strange to blame the former colonizer for uh, all the evils, or all the troubles, all the travails of formerly colonized country, and this is particularly true in Algeria, but it's also sometimes true in the elites of uh, French-speaking countries in Africa, where blame the French when in doubt is a very easy way to set aside your own responsibility, and I'm afraid that uh, the African elites and the Algerian elites also have to blame themselves for the situation of their country. This is what I was not into. I think that uh, the, the French former colonizer is always a little bit of a, uh, an easy scapegoat. That being said, uh, again, I can't, I can't accept the idea that Macron is doing that only for domestic politics. When he says, for instance, that when he tells um, uh, French people of Algerian descent, you are as French as I am, uh, that's not exactly pandering to the extreme right. Uh, very quickly, Yusuf, because we are out of time, but I do want your reaction to that comment. Uh, is it just an easy scapegoat? Is it just easy for the Algerians to blame the French for their own problems? Not, not necessarily. I would not agree with that. To, uh, there is an element of truth in what uh, the gentleman from Paris said, but I would not necessarily agree with him 100%. Let's go back 30 years ago, for instance, when the democratic transition uh, uh, started in Algeria and the Islamic party won that particular elections if it was not for the, for the intervention of 
the French, and especially as far as the European uh, Union was concerned, whenever the Algerian question was brought up on the table, it has always been uh, the French who defended the Algerian authorities at that particular okay. time. If it was not for the support of the French, yeah. I would agree that the Algerian transition to democracy and also over the last few years would have been completely different. France, caution. Sorry, we are so actually uh, out of time. Yusuf, we are out of time. Uh, but I do want to thank all our guests, Bruno Tetre, Yusuf Wandel, and Adelma Gay. And I, thank, and I want to thank you as well for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Imran Khan, and the entire team here in Doha. Bye for now.